Good day everyone, Vindicator Jones here and welcome to my next video in the Fertiland series. Today I'm going to discuss in depth how to fly the FDL more effectively in combat. First let me suggest something a lot of commanders don't really think about and that is ergonomics. Really take a minute to think about your controller layout and setup and how that affects you in combat. If you have a joystick, consider how you map your weapons, thrusters, chaff and SCBs to certain buttons. For instance, on my X52 Pro, I have a trigger and a thumb button for firing. Now the common route is to map constant fire weapons such as pulses and multi-cannons to the trigger and weapons such as railguns and plasma accelerators to the thumb button. But I noticed that when I was trying to line up a shot with the plasma accelerator, moving my thumb had the effect of causing the joystick to slightly shift. So instead I swapped the buttons around so that I now have better joystick control. In order to fly the Fertile Lance more effectively, you will need to focus on building your skills in five key areas. Situational awareness, target and ship orientation, active pip management, chaff control, and most importantly, flight assist off and thruster techniques. But the truth is, there is no single magical way that's going to make flying the FDL easier or make you a better FDL pilot. It is a culmination of many small factors coupled with patience and rethinking on how you initiate combat. Quite frankly, the FDL is probably one of the hardest ships to master correctly. Even I am still learning new ways to do things. Be aware of your environment, especially in an asteroid field. The FDL tends to slide around a lot, so being prepared for that will help you maintain your advantage, especially when using flight assist off. Watch your center radar, zoom in close if you can, and this will give you good indications of other enemy targets and any other security patrols or civilians that are close around you. It would seem obvious how important this is, but how few commanders really implement it effectively. Positioning yourself correctly with your target's attitude and directional velocity is an extremely important part of combat. Placing yourself behind an enemy ensures you will have maximum opportunity to keep fire on a target whilst reducing the chance of being fired upon. Use your target's attitude indicator to position yourself behind the enemy as much as possible. If you have any projectile based weapons, use its aiming reticule to gauge directional momentum and speed. Remember, your target may not always be moving in the direction they are facing. Knowing this is extremely invaluable in helping you maintain your position. This is where thruster control and flight assist off techniques will help you maintain your dominant position in combat. I'll discuss that a bit later in this video. The most successful commanders know that actively changing pip settings during combat is extremely important. With the FDL, it's even more so. The FDL benefits greatly from having pips into engines, possibly more so than any other ship. If you're having handling problems, this is probably where you first want to look. When trying to outmaneuver your target, always put full pips to engines. You will turn considerably faster and boost faster. When you are firing, put all pips to weapons, but keep two in engines. Your shields are already strong enough as it is, so they can soak up the damage. If your systems capacitor has run out, then quickly put all pips to systems for a few seconds to do a quick top up. Once you have mastered this technique, you can try switching from full pips to weapons to full pips to shields if a target is directly in front of you or chasing you from behind. Just try and constantly shift power to the system you need most at that specific time. The more effective you are at doing this, the greater your chances are at survival. If you prefer to shield tank, then I will discuss this a bit later in the video. There's nothing worse than releasing your chaff prematurely. Yeah, sorry about that. But timing your chaff activation is really crucial. Try and only use chaff if your enemy is directly ahead of you or directly behind you while firing. In all other circumstances, try and evade using maneuverability. This way you'll always have chaff ready for when you really need it. This is where most people seem to have problems with the FDL, and it can be extremely unforgiving if you try and fly it like a python or vulture. The FDL is very temperamental if you fly it out of its manoeuvring zone. The key word here is finesse. 
First, let's start with the throttle, as this seems to be where many people make their first mistakes. Always try and keep the throttle in the middle of the blue zone. This is where the FDL is most maneuverable. Only use full throttle if you need to catch up to a target or you need to run away. Keeping your throttle in the blue zone means you can turn faster and your thrusters will have greater effect when maneuvering. Don't be too aggressive with the throttle or stick like you would be in a vulture or python. Being smooth and precise will get you much further ahead in the FDL. Use boost only when you really need to. In fact, you will turn much tighter at lower speed and with far more control than you will while boosting. Don't get me wrong, boost turns are very effective too, but don't always rely on them. The biggest problem with the FDL's boost is the turn lag at the end of the boost cycle, followed by its trademark slide. You can use this to your advantage when getting behind an enemy by overturning the FDL so your nose is pointing in the same direction as your enemy's momentum, and then use the slide to get in behind them. And this is where flight assist off really comes in handy. A lot of commanders use flight assist off just to turn faster. And while this is true, flight assist off is often better utilized to adjust your ship's position in relation to your enemy's attitude and directional heading. For instance, if you're coming at your enemy from the side, point your nose of your ship behind the target, hit boost, wait for a second, zero the throttle and hit flight assist off. Now turn your ship quickly so your nose is now pointing in the same direction as your enemies. You may lose sight of your target, so this is where situational awareness really becomes important. As you see the enemy ship come into view, you should be facing directly at their engines. Immediately activate flight assist on and engage your target. If they are far ahead, then boost and use your vertical thruster technique, like I talked about in my previous video, to control the distance. This tactic is also very handy when you are face to face with the target. Lower your speed so your throttle indicator is at the bottom part of the blue bar. Turn off flight assist and use your lateral thrusters to move around the enemy as they fly by, while always keeping your nose on the target. As they pass, reactivate flight assist and move up to engage your target. If you are shield tanking, you can use this tactic against smaller ships that are more maneuverable. Boost away from your enemy and immediately deactivate flight assist, zero the throttle and select reverse thrust. While doing this, turn around 180 degrees to face your target while you are still boosting in reverse. Position the throttle to the middle of the blue and reactivate flight assist. You are now flying backwards, shooting at smaller ships which are chasing you from behind. If you don't feel comfortable with flight assist off, then don't worry too much. You can still use thrusters to a similar effect instead of switching to flight assist off. Use the direction thrusters to keep you moving in the direction you want to be traveling. If you'd like to turn faster in the FDL while boosting without having to resort to flight assist off, there is a little trick I discovered using the vertical thrusters. The technique takes a little practice to get used to as you have to feel the ship's momentum through the turn. Go to maximum acceleration, hit the boost button, now pull up whilst holding the down thruster. Midway through your turn, immediately switch to the up thruster and you'll notice there is a slight boost to your turn speed as you spin around. I think what is happening here is there is a pendulum effect taking place when you hit the down thruster and then quickly apply the up thruster. It tends to spin you around a little bit faster. It's a great way to keep control in a tight turn and can also help when turning with flight assist off. Remember, when maneuvering, try and keep full pips to engines as this will drastically affect the FDL's handling. Don't yank on the stick and try and ease out of turns. The FDL responds much better with smooth, deliberate movements and not aggressive yank and bank. Use the FDL's sliding trait to your advantage. Let the slip slide your ship into position instead of trying to force it. Because the FDL has such awesome shields, it's not surprising that some commanders love to shield tank the FDL. The technique is relatively basic, but it does take some experience to do it right. The setup is extremely important as you will want to have very efficient weapons, so you can set 3 to 4 pips to shields and 3 to 2 pips to weapons in a fight. A good weapon setup using this tactic is 2 class 2 pulses, 1 class 3 pulse in the huge heart point, and 2 class 2 multi cannons in the nose. You could also use 4 class 2 multi cannons and 1 class 3 beam weapon in the huge hard point. This loadout is less efficient but is great for doing maximum hull damage when the enemy shields have dropped. If you don't like any of these loadouts, 
then choose your own power efficient loadout. You should always try initiate combat from behind your target and try and get in as much damage as possible with full pips set to weapons. Try and hold this position for as long as you can until your opponent is about to face you head to head. Before they do, hit the chaff button and put full pips to shields and two pips to weapons and start firing. If your opponent is getting too close or trying to move behind you, then use reverse thrust to keep your target in front of you. Once you have reached half of your weapon's capacitor, switch to three pips to shields and three to weapons and hit chaff again. In most cases, this should give you enough time to finish off your target. Use SCBs when needed, just make sure you don't leave it too late to activate them. I usually wait until I hit one bar of shields, then activate. You can also use lower rated thrusters to help you maintain active SCBs while in combat, without having to deactivate modules or retract weapons. Hopefully that'll give you some ideas to play with and help you to maximise your skills with the FDL. I have tried to keep this video to a respectable length without delving into too much unnecessary detail so I can keep the duration to a watchable level. So if I have glossed over something you would like me to discuss in further detail, let me know in the comments section and I'll consider it for a video topic. In my next Fertilance video, I'm going to discuss the Class 4 PA and how to use it more effectively. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you have perhaps learned something new. If you have, please hit that like button and subscribe. I would also really love to get feedback on what I'm doing and anything you think I could improve upon. Feedback, good or bad, is greatly appreciated. Anyway, this is Vindicator Jones signing off. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you out there in the big black.